we check in with our Bears insider, Chicago Tribune Bears beat writer Dan Wiederer to get his thoughts on Mitch Trubisky's return to the starting role. Yeah, I'm sure there was some rust involved, Lauren, but this is Mitch's 45th start in four seasons, and nothing we saw Sunday night at Lambeau Field was anything new to us, right? We've seen turnovers. We've seen uh, mental mistakes, bad decisions, throws into triple coverage, throws into double coverage. It was the same old Mitch in a lot of ways, and I think that's frustrating for Bears fans to be right back where we started, right, and, and to, to be back in that mode of, of trying to find answers with a quarterback who seems to make more game-changing mistakes than he makes game-changing plays. And so uh, they're going to have to figure out how to get that fixed going forward with Mitch being their starter, obviously, again, this Sunday against the Lions. But still, I think we have our answer on who Mitch is as a starting quarterback in this league. What was the most alarming thing coming out of this Packers loss to you? The obvious choice, obviously, is the, is the way the defense played, right? We're not used to seeing that defense, Lauren, give up three touchdowns in a game, much less – three touchdowns on consecutive possessions to open the first half. It was, it was hard to watch a usually proud and reliable defense be picked apart the way they were by Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. The other part of it, though, the, the team as a whole seemed flat on Sunday night. And, and that's alarming because coming out of a bye week with a four-game losing streak, with a record of 5-5, five and five, understanding that if you want to stay alive in the division race, that game meant everything to you. And then to, to, to be down as big as they were in the first half and seemingly be so flat, that was troubling. And, and I don't know if there's answers for that. Uh, obviously, Matt Nagy was very agitated both Sunday night and, again, even more so on Monday. And so they're going to have to find a way to, to get that energy level up and, and, and be able to play with a winning level of energy because they don't have a very big margin for error right now. Word in Detroit is that the players weren't exactly crushed with the firing of head coach Patricia. Do you think that the Bears need to jump on this to knock down any enthusiasm or excitement that they have for change in a new coach? I, I do, Lauren, I do. And I think this is going to be a dangerous game for the Bears. I, I looked it up today. Since 2010, there have been 22 head coaches fired during the season. Their interim coaches won the opener the next week. 13 out of those 22 games. And so it tells you that, that sometimes maybe there's an energy boop spike amongst the team that just launched their head coach. Maybe there's a little bit of an overestimation from the team that they're playing of just how much disarray that team is in. And so the Bears have to be very ready to play a Lions team that while they've beaten them four times over the last couple of years, they haven't exactly been convincing victories. You remember they had to come back from 17 down in the opener to steal that game at Ford Field. Uh, a year ago, they needed a late fourth quarter touchdown drive to beat the Lions with third string quarterback David Blau. So it's not like they've actually dominated this series in any way, shape or form. And I think the Lions could be a feisty and re-energized opponent under Daryl Bevel on Sunday afternoon. Would you say that the biggest reason for hope moving forward is that the rest of the Bears opponents are pretty much uh, sub 500 teams except for the Packers, but by then they could likely be resting starters? I mean, it's certainly something to grasp at, right? And the Bears are grasping at anything they can grasp at right now. The other part of this, though, is, is the Bears don't have the luxury of looking at any opponent that they're going to play the rest of the way as inferior to them. If you look at this since October 1st, the Bears have won two games, right? They haven't won since the middle of October. It's going to be 49 days and counting when they walk into Soldier Field on Sunday afternoon. And so they don't have the, the ability to say, oh, hey, we've got a weak opponent this week because those opponents are saying the exact same thing about the Bears. You look at it. The Lions are three and five since October 1st. The Texans are four and four. The Vikings are five and three. Those are all teams playing better football than the Bears to some extent. And so they have to be ready to play. Their, they have to bring their A game. They really do because they're not good enough to look at anybody as below them. And, and so uh, while it's a, a step down in competition in some ways, they still better be aware that they could lose every single one of these games if they're not careful.